Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air-chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breast, organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. With the start of the new year, a yearning for a new start for our health and fitness, maybe. (laughs) Joining me now, Van Davis, who's Assistant Director of Wellness at Baylor University and founder of Fit for a Cause Community Events. It's great to have you. When I think about fitness things, I mean, you're the energizer bunny of fitness To me in Central Texas. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's a great compliment. And um, but this is my passion: Mm -hmm. fitness and helping uh, helping people to feel better, to look better, and to just have a better quality of life. And uh, if I can be a small part of their journey, I mean, it just makes me feel so wonderful. Well, you're always coming up with new ways to get people involved, and uh, in in certain sectors too. I mean, you, you have a real passion for that. Well, the thing is, to me, fitness is, I mean, it's, it's everything. If someone who is active, they're going to live better. They're going to feel better. They're going to be better, uh, better mom, better wife. And there's just so much that goes into you being more active than you are right now. And not everyone can afford a gym membership. Mm-hmm. Not everyone can, you know, has a great fitness center like we do at Baylor. But everyone can be fit at their own pace, at their own time, at their own um, neighborhood. And the main thing is, you know, to be fit, it's not about having to go out and run a marathon per se, or even running a 5K. If someone who has not been doing anything for a while, just walking around the block, a little something goes a long ways when it comes to fitness. So to be to be able to provide free community event that will you know be for all fitness levels to me is so important because I want everyone to come in, someone who's just starting out the fitness journey or someone who's been working out for you know many years should be able to be a part of an event, a community event that we can do together, and at the same time to um, provide a, a great. Um, um, how should I say, it's going to, um, what we do with Fit for a Cause also impact charitable um, organization mm-hmm. in our Yeah, community. you don't charge, but usually right. you have like bring canned goods or things like that. Exactly. To mm-hmm. and, and to me, you know, everyone can do that. It, and it's a great time for us to clean out our cupboards. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, the first of the year is just a <laughs> exactly. lot, of, lot of good things you to know, get, exactly. get done. Or you might have too many cans of tuna, you know, yeah, bring right. some for people um, who are in need. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, fitness is is more than just exercise. It's it's going to be a good diet too, and that that can be a problem in in certain sectors of the community where there maybe there are more just convenient stores to buy stuff at, or you know those kind of things. Right, and you know to to be able to provide you know canned goods uh, for Caritas. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing, and that can provide food for you know people who are in dire need right now because of COVID, maybe, you know, family have lost um, the jobs. So a lot of things like that. And to me, it's so important that we living in this community that we can help each other. And um, whether we do it through fitness or through just, you know, going straight to Caritas or other food banks and help out to me, you know, every little bit that we can pitch in to do while we can still do it is so important. Well, now the, I think back on when I first met you or was aware uh, of Van Davis, and it was it was probably anytime there was a, a major event like a walk, a major walk, or, or the um, Coleman Race for the Cure, any of those kind of things. At the beginning of it, I'd be there to MC or whatever. You were always there to warm the crowd up. How did you, how did you get that gig? I mean, what were you doing at the time? Were you with the Y or who, who were you? How, how did you get where you are? Well, <laughs> I've, been, that way. I've been around. You know, <laughs> I, I did come to Waco about almost 30 years ago. Really? Okay. And um, I've been a volleyball coach uh, most of my adult life. 
And uh, I did teach aerobics, you know, back in the Jane Fonda oh, years. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I did some of that at Western New Mexico University and came to Waco, worked at the Y. And, um, you know, I guess people just, when they see me, they know me, the first thing people always say is like, you have this energy, you know, this know. positivity. <laughs> you are. And to me, I thank God every day. You know, we all have many gifts and strength that is very unique to ourselves. And to me, I've always been a huge believer that, the gift that I got from God, the two greatest gifts are positivity and enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And um, so it just come naturally to me, you know. Um, so when I get on stage or when I lead a class or when I'm talking to people about the things that I'm passionate about, it just it's just there. You know, I don't have I wake up in the morning and and I tell you, the moment that I can step, take another step, get out, get out of the bed. To me, I'm thankful that I have another day. Amen. And if I'm going to have another day, I might as well use all the gifts and strength that God's given me to help others. And um, so it's a, it's a great day. Mm -hmm. I, I'm here with you today. It's That's another right. great day. So. It, is, it is a great day. It is a great start to a year. We, we're so glad to see 2020 <laughs> in the rearview mirror. Yes. You know, and, yes. And, and a lot of people, I'm not, I hate to use the word resolution, New Year's resolutions, because those are just made to be broken. And but a lot of people we know at fitness clubs, you know, they have their big surge right now. It's harder to get on the exercise machines right now because yes. everybody's decided to go and work out and get fit. And, and yet it is so easy to kind of fall out of that. So so what's your best advice on, OK, you know, I need to do something. I need to even if it's walk around the block, but I need to do something. How how do you keep that going so you do actually make a lifestyle change? Yeah. And I'm glad you said that you, you know, don't really believe in resolutions. And to me, resolutions are made to be broken. And people go into it gung-ho and, and it's so unrealistic. I'm going to do this and this oh, and this yeah. when they have not been doing anything. But, <laughs> but today I'm going to go full blast. And then by February, you know, most people lose their 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 tenacity. They lose their interest and they're back to, to square one. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's... I use my January, and, and this was yesterday, every first um, Sunday of uh, every year. That's my, my time that I reflect. I sit with my journal, and I look back and see what did I do well last year? What would I like to do differently? What would I want to continue? And it's more of, you know, just reflection and, um, and, and be able to set some new goals but it's not like hardcore resolution. It's more of, okay, now that holiday's behind us. Um, I'm put going the to cream cheese away. <laughs> put the cream <laughs> cheese away. And that's the thing, you know, we, we don't need to, to uh, be hard on ourselves and go, well, you know, it's the holidays. Uh, I've eaten too much, whatever. Mm. It's okay. It's okay. Because we can always start. And we can always start. But the biggest thing that I want people to keep in mind, in order to achieve anything, you have to have some goals. And, you, and these goals cannot be where it's so big that it's unattainable. Um, for someone that say you know, to me, I want to lose 10 pounds, the first thing I would say, how much time do you have? Because if they say I want to lose ten well, pounds, I'm, yeah, by I'm next going week. to a party next week, <laughs> exactly. and I need to get into that size six right. dress. Yeah. So, so first thing, you know, to set a goal, but the goals needs to be attainable and realistic. And most pe people can lose safely one to two pounds a week. Mm -hmm. So, if someone tells me that you know I want to lose ten pounds in two months, well, that's that's realistic and that's attainable. You know, you can do that if you can lose you know one or two pounds a week. You know, you have eight weeks to do that, and that's that's good. Okay, we can work with that, and that's really a safer way to do it, right? And then, but that cannot that cannot be the goal that you're you're look you're working with. Then the next thing I would say, okay, so that's your long term goals. That's mm -hmm. two months goal. So let's look at what we can do each week. Okay, how many times a week are you willing to be active? And if somebody tells me, I can do it real realistically three times a week, I said great. What time is best for you? Okay, now we've got three times a week. A person could say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, I'm writing that down. What time is best for you? Okay, I work until five, so maybe six o'clock. Okay, that's six. So now we narrow it down to, all right, I'm looking here. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at six o'clock, uh, you're going to, what are we going to do? 
Okay, you wanted to lose weight. Have you been doing anything at all? There's like, no. How about we just start with some walking? You think you can walk 15 minutes? Okay, yeah, I can do that. So I'm going to put down 15 minutes of walking. All right. And then each week we might add something different in there. Then we'll look at um, the, the, the person dietary intake. You know, are you drinking enough water? Okay. So we're adding little things here and there. We're tweaking a few things, but not, we're not doing a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. because if a person cannot stick with just the basic things and you're giving them, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We're going to change your diet. We're going to, it's, it's too much. So taking it one step at a time, setting small, realistic goals and also long-term goals that you want to achieve. But be, before you can achieve that, you have to break it down to small, manageable, weekly and even daily goals. Yeah, I'd love to see on Facebook the transformations where they have somebody maybe this morbidly obese mm -hmm. and they're starting to work out, you know, and do their thing. And I always want to see I want to see that transformation. Right. Um, do you have any stories of people that, that you know of maybe that you've counseled with or worked with that has really, you know, made a made a major transformation? I have a couple of um, staff at Baylor who, you know, started. Again, you know, started and stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the transformation to me sometimes hasn't have to be, you know, if a person starting doesn't have a lot of weight to lose, the transformation to me, what's more important is that this person now loves fitness. This right. person now is more consistent. This person now has a lot more energy at work. She's not tired anymore. She's not drinking coffee throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Those type of life-changing transformation that could happen to everyone it doesn't have to be that, oh, you have to be overweight in order to see lifestyle change. Everyone can use having more energy. Everyone can use, you know, just being healthier in general. So that, you know, we, in order for us, especially women, to take care of all the people around us, we need to make sure that we're at our best ourselves first. And that's just pointing fingers at ourselves and say, what am I doing right now? What can I do? One thing that will improve who I am today. And it might be, like I mentioned earlier, just drinking more water. Mm -hmm, yeah. Water is so important. Getting more sleep. Uh, just asking yourself, everyone listening out there, <laughs> ask, am I getting at least seven hours of sleep each night? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, never, or not at all, then I would say that can be such a huge change if you can just mm. only do that. But most of us, we, our body will adapt to whatever we're doing. Right. And, you know, I used to, for the longest time, say, oh, I can do just fine with five hours, six hours sleep. Well, it's not until I got the seven hours sleep and working hard to get it that it made all the, the changes in the world. Really? I mean, yes, totally. Mm. So, you know, small change, mm -hmm. water, maybe eating more fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Maybe cutting out on fried foods. And it's just one little thing that anyone, everyone can do. Don't think about so many things that you have to do. Just one little thing. It can go, it can go a long way and it can make a, a drastic change for us. Start your wellness journey at Whole Foods Market, where it's jumpstart January through the 16th. Stock up on supplements with some of the year's biggest savings. Plus, save on air-chilled organic boneless skinless chicken breasts organic honey crisp apples, organic large Haas avocados, and more. And since Whole Foods Market is the only certified organic national grocer, it's easy to make them your wellness destination. Jumpstart your January now at Whole Foods Market. You're such an encourager. And um, when and you mentioned COVID earlier, um, when all that started, you started a, a sort of a I don't, what would you call it? A support group in a way with some ladies. And I've got to be included in that. Yes. And because we were all just so bum fuzzled, I guess, about the whole thing. And we were at lockdown and people were trying to figure out how to work from home and all that kind of stuff. What what kind of drove you to, to, to create this little group, this support group? Well, to me, you know, especially with COVID, when, you know, sometimes we go through a situation in life where is affecting us. Mm -hmm. But this is one thing that affects everyone. And I know if I feel a certain way, my friends and my coworkers were all feeling the same. And COVID has impacted us in so many ways negatively. And what I keep hearing at that time is how people are fed up just feeling like they're alone. 
and there's not a lot of things that they can do and they're tired of being on Zoom and, and all of that. And yeah, we, we met on Zoom. That's right. But that, the that thing, was the first time I used right. it too. <laughs> but the thing is to, to have the connection, to be able to hear from Anne, from Elise, from whomever, and to be able to hear that person say, I am feeling this way mm-hmm. and this is what I'm having struggle with. And, and I'm feeling it, it myself. So hearing another person to share what you're feeling, that's important to have that connection and to feel like I'm not alone. I'm not feeling like this by myself. Other members of the community, other friends are feeling the same. So we can lean on each other and we can just even to get whatever we're feeling negatively out and to, he- to know that other people are hearing this, that just such a relief for us you know as human being but more importantly to be able to to share that have that connection through uh, the crisis that we were going through Mm -hmm. and um and then we you know just to be able to to share different topics and be able to utilize the strength of each other to be able to to pitch in and go you know yeah this is what um I've, i've done and this is what has helped me now you're helping other people so that's that's another facet of just coming together it was great it was i really thoroughly enjoyed that um more about COVID, though. You had it. I had it. Tell me, tell me about your, your journey with COVID. Well, you know, people have, uh, uh, first of all, people like to say, well, when you're fit and you're active, right. you don't get it. Well, that's not the point. COVID will get anybody who's not wearing a mask. Not, well. we, at Baylor, we were so <coughs> safe, you know, for a whole semester. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we wore masks, working out, teaching, everything. And I went to a wedding November 7th, that weekend. And, uh, you know, most people go to the wedding and you just attend the wedding. Mm-hmm. I, this is my best friend. So we were there, you know, two days before, a day after, and we helped cook, we helped set up, we helped prepare, but no one was wearing a mask at all. So we just kind of let our guards down and um, didn't wear a mask for about three, four days. And then on the way back from New Mexico, I told my husband, I said, if there were a time that we're going to get COVID, this was it. And sure enough, within six days, I started um, coughing and I had uh, body aches and took um, the COVID test and I was positive. Mm. And at the same time, Raymond started feeling the same. He was not positive. My daughter, who attended the wedding with us, was also positive. And my friends and her her sister, and there were like at least 12 people that oh, I knew wow. from, from yeah. the wedding that you know had COVID. But one thing that being active and, and being physically fit, it helps when you have it. You do not ha- go through the symptoms um, as strongly, and you don't have the same difficulty as if someone who um, might have you know other medical uh, right. situations. It's the underlying mm-hmm. conditions yeah. that are really, really devastating for some, some folks. I mean, and it, it's almost... It's it's hard to even understand because you you hear of a perfectly healthy thirty five year old who passes away from it exactly and exactly. Then my ninety two year old mother has sailed through it mm-hmm. without even a lot of symptoms so it's just hard this has been hard to wrap our heads around but you've done a beautiful job you know in in trying to keep people motivated and moving and so forth um, the fatigue was kind of one of the biggest symptoms I had what how long did it take you to kind of get over well, it, is, it was funny because before I left my work to go into quarantine, I print out a list of the COVID symptoms, mm-hmm. right? And at that point, I only highlighted two. I was tired. I felt like I have not slept for, for a week. I was I just needed to lay down. I need to close my eyes. I know. So yeah. I crossed that out and chills. I had you know the chills that morning, went home, and I thought, well, this is not bad. It's just like a, a, a mini flu. The next morning I woke up and I was putting some Benke on one of the spot on my body that's been bothering me. And I remember closing the cap and then I couldn't smell anything. Uh, so especially I, Benke. So I smell my hand. <laughs> I like couldn't nothing. smell it. So oh, I opened man. the lid and I put some Benke on my <clears throat> nose. Surely could not smell. I said, oh, well, I cross out lots of, <laughs> lots of smell. Check. check I cross check. out about everything on there yeah. within the week. Yeah. With the exception I didn't have a fever. I did not lose my sense of taste. And oh. um, and then the shortness in breath did not happen until towards the very end. Hmm. And it's just like one day that towards the end, I I woke up to go do something and uh, walk you know, went to the kitchen. And I remember feeling that my breath only went into my chest and it just stayed there. It didn't go all the way down to my stomach. You know, I was breathing. Mm-hmm. So I, I 
realized that that's when I have, you know, that shortness of breath. And then um, I went to work the next week after I finished my quarantine after Thanksgiving and just walk up a flight of stairs. Yeah. I really felt like, wow, this is this is this is bad. But then it went away. And now, you know, I feel just as strong and, and I feel better. And then mm-hmm. now knowing that I'm going to be uh, I have the shield around me for the next three months because yeah. I've had it. That felt pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You sort of feel a little bit, uh, you know, can't give it, can't get it. So, you know. But wearing a mask no, is, makes all the difference in yeah. the world. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you've got an event that is, uh, I know we're trying not to get have these uh, podcasts be real dated, but, but this is something you've been working on for a while. It's a community event. Um, on the 10th of January. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, I wanted to start a year with um, a a fitness event, but also to anything with fitness for a cause, there's going to be a cost. And a Mm -hmm. cost is, you know, uh, collecting canned foods for Caritas. Mm -hmm. And this event is going to be pretty amazing because of the lineup itself. It's going to be a one-hour workout this Sunday, the 10th of January at D1 Waco on Franklin Drive. We are going to start out with some refit Refit is amazing. For those of you who have never done refit before, this is going to be a treat. It's you know exercise with great music and it's a cardio based program. And then I'm going to do a couple of rounds of Tabata. And Tabata is simply whatever exercise um, routine you do, you do it for 20 seconds mm-hmm. and you break for 10. So you go all out for 20 seconds, you break for 10. So you might do jumping jacks or low jacks for 10 seconds, you break. You might do a set of squats for 20 seconds, you break, and you go back to jumping jack back and forth. It's so much fun and it's quick. And I'm going to be throughout the whole workout, I'm going to be showing low impact version. Mm-hmm. So someone who said, I don't know if I can keep up, come. You know, they can just follow me. They can keep up. I'll keep it low for everyone. And then we're going to finish out with um, a yoga cool down with Kim Dom from Yoga 8. She's amazing. So you're going to get a great, amazing instructors with great uh, format. And uh, within an hour, we're going to do all these three um, exercises. Uh, and then we're going to leave feeling great. We're going to start 2021 with a bang, <laughs> with a bash, I should say. With a bash. With a bash. And then just bring soup cans, bring any kind of canned goods. And for people who really do not want to work out or cannot, they can still drop off some canned goods sure. between 1.30 and 3 o'clock right outside of D1. I have my truck there, my husband's truck, and they can just you know s- swing by and drop off some canned goods. And I know they, awesome. could, they could use the help for sure. Yes. And what a great way to kind of maybe sample some different kinds of, ac- maybe some things you've not tried before exactly. and, uh, and have a lot of fun. There's a lot to be said for the uh, group support with, you know, whatever exercise you choose to do to to have other people involved with it so that there's a little accountability. Right. And and it just makes it more fun. Yeah, the the fun part's gotta be there. If mm-hmm. it's not fun, you're not gonna stick with whatever no. it is you're doing very long. So this is gonna be fun, it's gonna be energetic and and the the it's gonna be different fitness levels. So you don't have to go, you know, I haven't worked out, I'm not gonna fit in. Everyone will fit in. Just like Refit's um, slogan, it's like everybody belong. Mm-hmm. So everybody, we want to encourage everyone. But there is a limit of 35 people because we're going to be social, socially distancing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so um, people need to either text me, email me, Facebook me to let me know that they want to come so I can send them the link to register. Okay, so how mm-hmm. can they do that? They can just go to <coughs> Facebook. And just, you know, a message Van Davis Mm -hmm. or just send me a message um, directly or they can uh, email me at Van underscore Davis at Baylor.edu. And my phone number is 7168605. Nope, that's wrong. 254-716-8605. I think that's right. Um, So either way, all of that, they can just... Get in touch with me. I'm going to be putting the new flyer on the um, Facebook page so you know the community can see it. On They can go to Fit for a Cause mm-hmm. Facebook page and be able Fit, to see that. and then the numeral four, four and a cause, cause yeah. that, that you have created. Of course, you're, you're a super Baylor fan, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. If, if, if there's a crowd shot, they'll be va- – and she's going to have a crazy green and gold wig on or something. So, so just quickly, in the last few minutes we have – you're what are you most excited about Baylor athletics? Right well, now? right now, basketball. Yeah. Of course. You know, we just finished volleyball and football. And mm-hmm. volleyball had a great, I wouldn't call it a season because their season's not quite finished. They'll carry on their season. Their playoffs will be in the spring. So I'm excited to see them 
uh, in the playoffs in the spring. But right now, of course, men and ba- women's basketball, they're always the top of, um, you know, um, our division and also nationally. And it's nice. It's, you know, I've been here for so long at Baylor that, you know, we, there were, it was at one time, you know, Baylor was not even talked about anywhere. Oh, no. Anywhere nationally. Yeah. And the only time is something negative, like, you know, go to Baylor. You probably can beat them. But now, uh you know, we're beating everybody. And it's so nice to be at the top of the wave and, and nice to be um, where we're getting the respect that we deserve. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. You know, our Baylor is so much fun. And my husband, you know, um, he used to... <laughs> He used to get embarrassed when we would walk to we would go to the game because I'm decked out in my wigs and my <laughs> and then he for a while he would tell me, Oh, I'll meet you there. And then after <laughs> no. about months of this, I realized that he didn't want to walk in with me. <laughs> but now after 20, 30 years, he will walk in. He even holds he my needs hand the now. wig on too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he, okay, he he's got his Baylor shirt. Okay, on. That's, all right. That's as far as probably I <laughs> I have enough spirit for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you do. So you are easy. You're easy to spot in a crowd. But I love my bears. I know you do, and they are uh, they're they're doing great, and we love we love watching them. And too. I'm going to be so glad when COVID is is behind us. So yeah, that so the fans can, can really back. come yeah. back. Yes. Oh yes. Well, and you know that fan support for those athletes yep. means a lot. Yeah. Well, as an athlete myself in college, I know that if we were playing volleyball or basketball and there's no fans in the stand, it's just like another practice, right, with a sure. different team. Yeah. So it has a, a totally, a, you know, it would be so helpful for our athletes to be able to, you know, hear some fans and see some fans. And, and I can't wait to be able to get the community back and, and supporting our Bears. Okay, good. Well, I'd like to end these visits with a questionnaire. I may have done this with you. I don't know. It's been a while, though. But, uh, yeah, so you you may have different answers. It's similar to the one the late, great James Lipton used on Inside the Actor's Studio. And we'll start off with, well, see if if these are different. What is your favorite word? Awesome. (laughs) That's the same one I know because (laughs) awesome is just, it's just, I, it's, it's awesome. I mean, like, I think at the last time I told you that every letter in awesome, to me, it stands for a different word, amazing, right? Wonderful, exceptional, spectacular, outstanding, <laughs> magnificent, and last one, extraordinary. Oh, so, you I are mean, all those awesome. things. Yeah, you, are, awesome. you are all those things. So when things. I say that to you, uh, <laughs> and you're awesome, you mean all of that oh, to me. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great word. Yeah, it is a great word. Okay, so what's your least favorite word? Can't. Can't. Yeah. Or anything negative. You know, when people start, when you say something and people say, I can't, or I don't want to, or to me, they have not given it them, themselves a, a, a chance to have whatever you know to me nothing is impossible you just need to try and you need to ask you need to do so can't is is um, a hard word for me to hear what turns you on creatively or people sp- yeah spiritually maybe uh yeah. people when it, i mean to me i god gave me again uh, the positivity and enthusiasm and when i'm around people that mm-hmm. That just comes alive even more. I can talk to a door, you know, and still be enthusiastic. <laughs> yes, but it's you not can. As much, it's not as much fun being around people. So that really drives me. And to me, just all the many gifts and blessings that God has given me, that, that to me, I mean, every day that we have on this earth is another gift of another day that we can be impactful even you know, with our small circle of influence, or if you have bigger circle of influence, use that. So you know the gift that we have for every day, live it your best and do your best. Yeah. Well, then what turns you off spiritually or emotionally, creatively? What turns me off? Negativity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that in a general sense of when people are pessimistic about something, just n- just negative attitude to me, that turns me off. When, you know, I know Facebook, when people start spewing negative things oh. about, it doesn't you matter what You know what, what there's topic. an unfriend button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and when they're my friends, I'm going, Yeah, you, you hate know, that, yeah. but still. But, but there's enough of that in the world without yeah. contributing anymore. And to me, when you're negative, when you write negative, when you think negative, the rest of your being is also negative. So why not change it and do the opposite? 
you know, think of something positive, then you can live a more positive life. And that's, that is a lot more impactful to you know, people around us, the people who we serve, and it's just better, period. What sound do you love the most? Ocean wave. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I can be there right now. I would love to be there. Just ocean, <laughs> ocean <Wouldn't> wave we <laughs> and, 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 and breeze. You know, just that calming sound to me. It's, I think because I'm so busy all the time, mm-hmm. and that's what I go to sleep with. So, you know, when, when I have a sleep routine, and that's what plays. Um, so I, I look forward to that sound. I am most relaxed when I hear Mm-hmm. What sound do you not like? I would say, like the the traffic honking, the um, pe- people being like in a hurry, mm-hmm. where they where you can hear that busy sound in a way. Um, a traffic jam, people honking because they they are impatient. Um, that like those sounds of negativity to mm-hmm. me, you know, um, uh, people being in a hurry, people screaming at something, people yelling at the top of their voice, uh, obscenity, things like that. To me, all of that, you know, to me is all negative. And I think in general, all the questions you've asked me it is about positivity and negativity. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. If it's negative, you know, I I have. I like to turn myself off to that. But if it's positive, it's welcoming and it's it's enlightening and it's positive. Yeah. What what other profession would you have liked to try? Oh, I would love and I tell my husband this all the time when we're watching um um videos or um a concert. I would love to be able to sing like Celine Dion. <laughs> Yeah, voice of an angel. I know, and be able, and be able to dance like like Janet Jackson. Okay. that combination. <laughs> I would love to be able to perform and be able to do that and be able to 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 do a concert once a week and give that proceeds to different country that needs some money. Oh. Because you know, once if you're that good, you can do anything. You've had enough money set aside, then you just do it to help other people. Because again, that's a if you have that kind of gift. Why not give back in a big way? Mm-hmm. And I wish more people would do that because they have so much already and people are just wanting more and more and more. How many cars do you need? Yeah, How really? much money do you need in a bank account? Yeah. But look at all the people you can help. And I wish people would do more of that. What profession do you know you would not want to do? What profession? Well, anything that has to do with deep water, I cannot <laughs> do because I'm scared. <laughs> Or or, okay. or a job that 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 um, that requires you to be somewhere high, mm-hmm. you know, um, people that do bungee jumping, mm. or people the staff that you know that has to be up high to hook people together so they can bungee jump, stuff like that. I would not be great at. I'm afraid of water and I'm afraid of height. <laughs> and and you know uh, the Amazing Race TV show. Uh-huh. My husband and I are in the process of hopefully you know um, apply for that. Are you and, really? And in the process, they ask you, what are you most fearful of? Mm-hmm. And I know when they pick people, they look at the fear and they And that's where they're going to put you. Exactly, right? <laughs> so I, like, we were talking about it the other day, should we lie and not put those things <laughs> I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> anything, right? <laughs> Me? Afraid of anything? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh-huh. All right, finally, what do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates, Van Davis? You have used the gift and strength that I gave you, well, welcome home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, man, thank you so much. Appreciate your time, and a happy new year to you. A happy, healthy new year. Happy and healthy new year to you too, Anne, and to everyone out there listening. Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. W Waco.
I am your host, Debbie, here to help you get in the know about Waco. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here? I'm here to be your tour guide through Waco. I'm here to tell you all the goings on in and around Waco. I'm going to give you the 411 on what's happening, what's going on, and what events you should go to. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. Are you building a new business while managing a family? Are you tired of trying to balance home and work and everything seems to be coming up short? Then there's a podcast made just for you. Baking Your Business from Scratch is where we create the perfect recipe for building a successful business while managing your home and family with love. Come join us and see for yourself. This has been Globe Media Network Podcast.